Hello beautiful Leos and welcome to your horoscope for March of 2020 and Leos I really love this month for you. I really really do. First of all Mercury is coming out of retrograde which is always exciting. We've got your health planet actually taking a move into the energy of Aquarius. Venus is going to be at home and working ever so comfortably in the energy of Taurus and as the sun moves into Aries, this is a shining opportunity for you because the sun is exalted in the energy of Aries. So when the sun is over there being exalted, that's good news for you in the Leo placement. So let's jump in here and see what this month is all about for you and how you can use these energies best in your world, okay? First and foremost, as we're starting off the month, remember we're coming into the month still in a Mercury retrograde. So still not the best time to make any really huge decisions, it's best to go back over things that have already been on the table. So if there were things you had been previously working on, even if that means that during the Mercury retrograde, let's say that you interviewed for a job four months ago, haven't heard back from it, it comes back to your table and you're offered the job, yes, please, by all means, move forward with that because that's your retrograde saying, I got your back, right? But if it's something brand new that came up during the retrograde time, it's best to just be on pause and delay that until we get to about the 9th and if you can even delay it further until the 16th that's going to be better because mercury will be in full forward motion Woo! say that three times fast so Keep that in mind as we're jumping into this month, okay? Now, at the beginning of the month, Mercury, who is retrograde, is going to continue his retrograde path out of the energy of Pisces and come back here into the energy of Aquarius. Now, first of all, Mercury in Pisces is in fall. So it's already, it's like a retrograde plus plus, right? Because he's not exactly comfortable over there. He's not got clarity of details. There's trusting a lot of the intuition, not even your feelings, but your intuition when it comes to Mercury and Pisces. Then he flips around backwards, so it's like I've got to be very intuitive or I've got to spot the stains that are on my little life carpet from before, but in a very intuitive way. Now, as Mercury steps back into the energy of Aquarius, what happens is he gets back to being able to think, to share, to communicate very openly, very detailed, very quickly, right? Because in the energy of Aquarius, Mercury can be hyper communicative actually. So it's gonna come back though and step into your seventh house. Now here's a thought that keeps coming to me as I go over this month for you is I have a couple different indicators that first of all, relationships are gonna be some work. Maybe there is something that is unfinished or it was neglected, or you didn't understand it at the time. And as Mercury steps back into Aquarius, something in one of your significant personal relationships, to include the relationship of you with you, Leo, may need to be discussed. You may have to get that out there on the table and have a conversation about it. Now, the Sun and Neptune are shining together wonderfully in your eighth house. This is the house of fears, of secrets, of things that are down deeper, a little bit more dark, things that are intimate, right? Even finances, wherever you may be jointly connected to another human being, these two energies are shining brightly as Mercury steps back into your seventh house. So if there's something in a relationship that needs to be adjusted, please make those adjustments because this energy is beckoning for your attention, right? Now, could this be too that it's like in a business relationship or in some kind of connection that you have, it's time to go back over your contracts or your documentation or your branding. Maybe you're going, this is Aquarian energy, maybe you're going back over your social media, right? Whatever it is, something has to be addressed because it just has been left undone. So pay attention to what this is bringing into your world. Now also we've got Venus. Oh, I jumped her early. She's moving out of the energy of Aries and into the energy of Taurus here. Now Venus is completely at home in the energy of Taurus. This is an energy she rules. So she is comfortable coming over here. You may find yourself, and this lights up your 10th house, okay? So in your career area, in your career zone, Venus is bringing you the good stuff. She's very magnetic. She's like, in here let me love on you right so it's a very 
very magnetic energy for you. Now, Venus in this area as well is about money. She wants to bring you that promotion. She wants to bring you that opportunity to have income coming into your life in some way, shape, or form. Now, I get asked all the time, well, what about if I'm retired? The 10th house is not just about work. It's about who you are known as in your community, right? What are you known as? Are you a helper? Are you a volunteer? Are you a public servant in some way, shape, or form? And it's also about your soul level calling? What gift do you have to give? Even if you're retired, even if you are unemployed, what gifts do you have at your fingertips that you could be making accessible and useful to your community and therefore bringing a magnetism of Venus's money, well-being, sensuality into your life? So please consider that this month, Leo. If you are wanting to work or you're wanting to change your financial situation and it feels like you're bumping up against the same wall, look at how you can adjust that. It does mean you have to do work, but it means you might be blocking your own blessing here. Now, the other reason I bring that up is because Venus is going to conjoin, come into a nice conjunction here with Uranus. So Uranus in your career area paired with that Venus says, hey, let's find a different way to make money. Hey, let's find a different way to maybe even a strange kind of romance blows into your life, right? Venus is here with Uranus, who's over friends and groupings and social things. Mercury's also lighting up a very friendly Aquarian energy. Somebody who you maybe just met at a social occasion or something could be coming into your life at this particular point. Now, I will warn you before you get too excited about that. Saturn's going to step up into this Aquarian energy by the end of the month, and that may slow down your dating. And it doesn't mean that it pulls it to a full stop, Leo. What it will mean is that you're going to be slowed down enough to get a little bit more serious and start looking for the quality over the quantity of dates, of jobs, of whatever it is that you're interacting with, okay? But there's still hope. Venus is up here bringing you good stuff. On the 9th, we're going to have a full moon happening in the energy, there we go, of Virgo. So this is going to light up your second house, Leo, okay? Now, a full moon is our opportunity to end something, bring it to culmination, let it finish out, bring it to a close, adjust something. Ah, oh, i got to adjust the track of this or it's not going to be able to keep moving forward, or to acknowledge something. Down here in the second house, right? In the Virgo energies, what this is asking you to look at is the details of your finances, the details of things that you value, your possessions, the way you use your skills and talents to make money, things that you have in your possession that you maybe don't need anymore. Is it time to put it on letgo.com and bring yourself some money, right? Is it time for you to become um, an Amazon affiliate? Something like that where you haven't seen it before, but it's been right in front of you, giving you the opportunity to take on something new. Now, Virgo, in the details of what it's going to show you at this moon to end, acknowledge, or adjust, Virgo is going to say, we've got this big old project to handle, but we're going to do it one little thing at a time. Virgo will show you the steps to take to have this be the healthiest energy available to you. Virgo wants healthy, perfect money for you, right? And Venus is up here trying to get you to have some of it. Uranus is helping out by saying, let's look at this from a different perspective. So there's certainly an opportunity for some brilliant growth happening here. But think big things here, okay? All right. On the 16th, where do we go? On the 16th, Mercury is going to hightail it back here into forward motion, right? So it's back in forward motion. First, let me tell you this. What happens is on the 9th, Mercury's here, and Mercury comes direct in the energy of Aquarius. We're excited. This is a good deal. Things can move forward. On the 16th, he really starts to move forward, and that's this movement into the energy of Pisces. That's why I say if you can wait until the 16th, you really have the best forward motion you're going to get from Mercury in your favor as he steps up here, okay? So as he comes back into your 8th house, I will tell you, <clears throat> Leo... If you saw something in your relationships, 
right? If something intimate, something critical, something in a joint nature was revealed, something around your money was revealed, right? What could happen here is in the eighth house, you're making some new joint decisions. Yes, I've looked over this contract. I would love to have your sponsorship. I would love to collaborate with you. I would love to take this astrology class, right? Remember the sun and Neptune are beaming up here. Your dreams, your psychic sixth sense, your intuition, they're lit up and they are working well and in your favor. So trust your gut. Have you had somebody in your life who you're like, I can't put my finger on it, but something's out of alignment here. Mercury's back in Pisces. You're you're not going to have logic. You will have to trust that intuition. You will have to trust those dreams and those visit visions. But ultimately, this energy stepping back here is giving you a space to get to the down and dirty of what is living down there. This is also an energy where you may... Um, you may want to see an astrology or you may want to do your tarot, your numerology. Psychology is a big one that comes in here as well. So if you're needing any kind of help, there is no shame in needing help. There is no shame in needing counsel, therapy, astrology. If you need help, by God, go get it, okay? On the 20th, we have a joyful day. We've got the sun moving into the energy of Aries where it is exalted. The sun is like, this is not my house, but I love coming here. What are we going to get done? So the sun moving into Aries also signals for us here in the northern hemisphere that we're moving into our spring equinox. You guys, it's time for a new season. I don't know about you, but I am ready for a little bit of a new season, literal new season, right? Now, if you're one of our southern hemisphere friends, welcome to your your autumn equinox. This will be your time to start to slow down just a little bit and see what you're going to create as those seasons start to get a little bit cooler. But the sun here in Aries. Now, first of all, Aries and the sun are both energies that want to do stuff. They're motivated, right? This is a motivated set of energy. So as the sun is here in Aries, who's a cardinal, let's start energy. You may be taking your first trip you may be taking your first whatever to international waters. The ninth house is publishing, broadcasting, any way that you expand yourself out. Um, education, maybe you're starting a certification course, maybe you're starting an astrology class, right? But whatever it is, you're going to be completely motivated to do it. You haven't published that book yet, maybe you're going to start conversations because you agreed to the collaboration. Maybe you haven't started that translation job because you've just signed your agreement, right? So whatever it is that is lighting up in the ninth house that pushes you to expand your horizons, this sun in this Aries exalted space is going to help you do that. This is the energy, my friends, of fresh, new, delicious beginnings. Okay, so as we continue to travel on through the month, we're going to also have this neat conjunction that I want you to circle on your calendar. Put this day just on your calendar because it's so useful. So 20th, 21st time frame. Jupiter and Mars are going to be together in a conjunction here in Capricorn. Now, because they're conjoining in Capricorn energy, it means it's grounded, it's solid, it's a wise use of your resources. So with these two energies coming together, they are courageous. They are wise and brilliant and in motion. So this is the day I want you to circle and I want you to take some action that day. Trust your intuition, but take action. This is a day to go for it. And it's going to be around sixth house things. Your job, a project, your daily routines, right? Mars is here in Capricorn. He's trying to help you get your daily routine restructured, reorganized. How are you managing your life? How are you managing your health care? How are you managing your mental health? Are you caring for a person, a loved one, small animals, and it's needed a little bit of restructuring? Are you ready to sign that deal and work freelance, right? Whatever it is, this is the day that you go for it. This is forward motion. We're in full forward motion now, so go for it, okay? On the 21st, Saturn's going to hitch the road out of Capricorn and move into the energy of Aquarius. Now, this, my friends, 
This is not the extent of this transit, and I want to be clear about that. This is a little tis taste, okay? This is he's flirting with you up here, but he is gonna give you um, a little foreshadowing of what is to come when he actually moves back for the full two and a half year transit in December. Now, Saturn is gonna be up here from March 21st until July. So what you're gonna see is, first of all, Saturn coming up there does test relationships. It tests all kinds of relationships. And, and here's what I have experienced. The ones that are strong, the ones that will communicate, the ones that don't have secrets, the ones that are in alignment will work out right? Or if you've got troubles there, you will be tested and you will be put in a position to work them out. And if you can do that, those relationships will stay together. If relationships are just, if the work is not there, if the alignment is not there, and that's romance, that's business, that's friendship, that's you with you, then the relationship will fall out, okay? Now, like I said, this Saturn coming into your seventh house, for some people, this is going to make you commit, right? You're going to take on some big level commitment. And you're like, yeah, I think we should get married. Yeah, I think we should move in together. Yes, I should sign this contract and partner with you. But what it also does is it slows you down enough to make sure that you're making an intelligent decision, right? So it's a really nice energy. And also keep in mind, Leo, Saturn is not just at home in the energy of Capricorn. He also rules the energy of Aquarius in traditional astrology. So he's just as at home here. In the energy of Saturn, we see him, or in Capricorn, we see him be very concrete. We see material progress. When he gets into Aquarius, Saturn starts to change the mind. This is an intellectual, inventive, genius, forward-thinking energy. So what Saturn's going to show you to bring in here is about the best of your future, getting serious about your friends, Aquarian energy. Who are you running with? Getting serious, this is still Saturn, about your health. Capricorn rules your sixth house in the general, and this is the ruling planet of Capricorn. So you're going to get serious about your health. You're going to get serious about your friends. You're going to get serious about being connected to organizations that you have relationships with. And let's not forget that Saturn is going to slow you down a little so that you can also get serious about what you're doing at work, right? Uranus is up here, ruling energy of Aquarius. So there's a lot of seriousness that comes to the table, but it's for your help and benefit. Now, something that's coming in for me, and I'm not sure who this belongs to, but if you've been having physical problems, physical issues or ailments or something like that, as Saturn makes this move up here on the 21st, I would tell you your physical ailment might be coming from um, a stressful connection to a friend or to some relationship in your life. So before you rule it out as just having a cold, do you have a cold every six weeks when that certain person comes around? Do you have a cold or does your throat hurt every time you go and you're with a certain group of people? You might need to look at that because the underlying cause of your illness could very well be that you are sitting in an alignment of energy that is not for you and is therefore bringing you down. So how, whoever that's for, that's for you. <laughs> All right, you guys. As we continue to move on through this month, on the 24th, we're going to give Aries a birthday present of a new moon. So the new moon happening here in Aries energy, again, a fresh beginning, because we're going to plant our seeds of intention to give this a fresh start. It doesn't mean you have to begin something completely new, but it does request a fresh start, fresh eyes, fresh perspective on whatever it is that you've been working on, especially here in the ninth house, travel, publishing, broadcasting, um, education, spiritual teaching, ministry, whatever it is that you're into that expands you and broadens you, you're asking for a request there. But the thing to remember in Aries energy is you're not asking for another plan. You don't need another plan. You don't need more information here. You have gathered your information in January and February. And Aries new moon says move, get into action. You have got to take action. Don't be in analysis paralysis. Move your butt, right? So this is a very, very movable moon for us to work with. Now, on the 30th, as we end this month, Mars is going to step up here and travel with Saturn in your seventh house. So I'm telling you, relationship stuff. And if you look at the board, you can see that most of the happenings are on the right side of your, your chart and also on the top part. So this means that what we're looking at is a very busy, very public month for you. And you've got to reevaluate your relationships, right? So your energies, 
the passion, the power, the movement, maybe even desires that you have in your life will very much so be expressed through your relationships. So take Saturn's hint this month, Leo, and make sure you are aligned with the right people. Make sure that if you are out in a grouping setting, you are bringing something to the table. Do not show up as just a taker. Show up as a giver as well, okay? All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you so much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye, everybody.